It's the heart and the root of so much great American music, the Mississippi Delta. Jazz, rock, urban blues, a lot of the best country all owe a debt to early blues artists. And one highly original rocker, Jack White, has now stepped in to rescue a priceless blues archive from obscurity. The song was recorded in 1930. Last kind word, blues. Gishi Wiley. Gishi Wiley's eerie lament. Now imagine being in the room while she's recording this song. <laughs> the last kind word, I hear my The original 78 of Last Kind Words Blues was released by Paramount Records, a powerhouse in black music before the war. The extraordinary rise and fall of Paramount is chronicled in a two-volume box set. So what were you trying to show with this? Uh, how ludicrous that I could be, uh, really, <laughs> with my free time. Co-producer Jack White, the former White Stripes frontman and founder of Third Man Records, spent three years on the project, which includes 1,600 tracks. Jack, this is really an epic project. Well, this is, you know, you can sit down on a Sunday and, uh, and spend seven hours with this, and you've only gotten through about 5% of it. Paramount Records would unwittingly change the course of American music. Started by the white-owned Wisconsin Chair Company, which also made wooden cabinets for phonographs, Paramount was created to spur sales. The label released artists in all genres, but their biggest sellers were race records. Blind Lemon Jefferson's 1926 recording, Long Lonesome Blues, would sell in the six figures. How did Paramount get into race music? Well, there was Mayo Williams, who was a producer, and he was their link to African-American culture. Williams, a Brown University graduate, scoured the South looking for talent. In a way, he was the first African-American music executive. I think so, yeah. I think he's really important. Paramount artists would include a young Louis Armstrong, Ethel Waters, Jelly Roll Morton, and Charlie Patton, father of the Delta Blues. The label advertised in African-American papers like the Chicago Defender. They mythologize all of the blues musicians, which is beautiful. But there's also these incredible illustrations and drawings, and no one has any idea who did these drawings. He's mm -hmm. just a ghost. He's lost to time, him or her. In a way, you're, you're bringing back a lot of ghosts here. Well, don't I look like one? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> there's so many of those singers. You just have a name. There's no photograph. There's no record of who they are, where they came from. Right. That's it. Yeah. And we're lucky to have that. The Depression took down Paramount. The last recordings were made in 1932. But Jack White's labor of love helps restore Paramount's place in music history. I want it to be something, you know, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, someone will drag out of the attic and it'll inspire some songwriter then who will listen to Charlie Patton or Gishi Wiley and find something beautiful and it'll trigger something new and carry that forward. I hope that happens with it. And this is the second of the two box sets. It is an absolutely stunning thing that includes six vinyl records. It's made to look like a vintage turntable. Underneath here, you get these two books with the full history of Paramount and this USB and the Paramount logo that has 800 songs on it. It's and, an and, and may I ask what the price tag is for all this? It costs you about a month of mortgage payment. It's, <laughs> it's $400. But considering what you get here, it's actually a pretty amazing package. It's a stylish little USB port, too. And it's very nifty. Ha, ha, ha.